How's everyone doing today? Great. Good. Now, how many, I know it's lunchtime. How many are you here because you want to learn about EFT? Okay. And how many are you here because it's too hot outside? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a couple people in the back are like, yeah. I don't know what this is, but it's too hot outside, so I'm coming in for this. Now, how many of you are familiar with EFT or tapping? All right, I'm done. I mean, you'll know all about it. So, for those of you that aren't, well, so who's not? Who has no idea what tapping is? Oh, great. Okay. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to break down what it is. I'm going to share a little bit of my story as to how I found it and used it in my life. And then we're going to get to the experiential side of actually using it. And that's why there's three lovely chairs up here for volunteers that hopefully we get to actually experience the tapping. One of the things that drew me to it almost 10 years ago now was the fact that it's something that you can experience so quickly. You know, we can learn a lot of concepts and study explore, and explore personal development and how to improve ourselves, but a lot of things seem to take a lot of time, right? It's like meditation is great, but try it for 30 days and then see a result, you know? Or you try to sit down for five minutes and you're like, ah, this is too difficult, right? What's amazing about tapping is you can have a physical experience right there and see the change. And that's what happened for me. I discovered it about 10 years ago, like we do most things, browsing online. I kept reading about this weird tapping thing. It's like, okay, people were tapping on their body and saying certain statements and they were getting ridiculous results. Everything from physical pain to limiting beliefs to people losing weight doing this process. And like most of us, for there was a while when I was like, I, this doesn't make any sense to me. I couldn't compute why tapping on these burning points in our body would really do so much. I remember waking up one morning and I woke up with neck pain. And you know when you like sleep wrong, it happens every like couple years and you walk around for like a couple days like this and you're, people are like, what's wrong with you? And it's just a little neck pain, right? The muscle that's stuck. And it was bothering me all day. I said, you know what? I keep reading about this tapping thing for neck pain, so I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna see what happens. So I'm reading the instructions online and I go through the process and I'm tapping through the points and next thing I know I go, oh my gosh, like that's gone. Like, the neck pain was gone completely. And that was exciting. I mean, it's cool to have your neck pain go away in a couple minutes. But what really blew me away and what got me really thinking is I used to have a perception that I would have neck pain and it would last for a day, two days, three days. Now this strange-looking technique comes along. I use it, and that perception is blown right out of the water. Right? So I started asking myself, if I can change that that quickly, what else can I change that quickly? Right? And it's a paradigm shift. We're so used to these things in our lives where we go, well, it takes a lot of work to change these self-sabotage patterns. It takes a lot of work to change the procrastination, to lose weight, to attract the person that I want. We have these beliefs that it's going to be a lot of deep work. What the tapping does in incredible ways is it shifts through that work so quickly. Right? For a long time, we didn't understand why tapping on these meridian points works so well. And the latest science and research is really exciting. And here's what it's showing. When we do this tapping process, when we hit these meridian points in our body while focusing on certain issues, and if you're still totally confused about what we're doing, don't worry, we'll get to the actual process. When we hit these meridian points in the body, we're actually sending a signal to the amygdala in the brain. Right? The amygdala is the fight or flight response center in the brain. Everyone's heard about the fight or flight response center. What is that? It's that primitive part of your brain that when there's a tiger in the bushes and it starts chasing you, you run, right? Very important part of the brain in those situations. The challenge that we're faced with these days is that we're activating this fight or flight response center in our brain basically every day under a huge variety of issues. And sometimes there's subtle responses. Sometimes you're just a little stressed out about something, your body tenses up. And other times it's the pattern again and again of waking up every morning frustrated about something that you're doing again. You know, frustrated that you have this dream, this goal and passion, and you just can't seem to get to it. And you're wondering why does that happen? And what I'm postulating is that these patterns of self-sabotage, the procrastination, the things that you want in your life that you can't make happen, at the most basic level are fight or flight responses. They're stress responses. I've been doing a, uh, a program recently on using tapping for finances, right? Now we're like getting super woo woo. It's like, okay, wait, wait, we're tapping on meridian points in our body to make more money. Like, come on, right? But this is what it comes down to. Your goals, your dreams, your passions, your aspirations, if you're not getting to them, they are likely at some place rooted, connected to a fight or flight response. 
What does that mean? It means you think about writing a book, and the moment you think about it, you go into that subtle fight or flight response, your body locks up, and you go, I, I can't do this. Right? Or you actually start writing the book, you get three chapters in, now it becomes dangerous, because now you're three chapters in, and now you lock up. Right? You have your to-do list, and you're like, OK, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to approach it. And you open it up, and you go, ugh. Now you lock up. And it's these subtle fight or flight responses that keep us stuck. They keep us overwhelmed. From the most basic physiological perspective, the second we look at that to-do list and get even just a little bit stressed, the second that we think about writing a book and get just a little bit stressed, the second we think about changing our careers or following our passions and we get a little bit stressed, the, the blood flows away from the forebrain, right? What's fight or flight? You're being chased by a tiger, okay? Blood flows away from the forebrain into the body, and now we're in that defense mechanism. And guess what? That's not where the passion is. That's not where the enthusiasm is. That's not where the cognitive ability to think through the problem you're faced with is. So we look at the to-do list, we lock up, the blood flows away, and now we're even less powerful than we were five minutes ago looking at it. And those are the patterns that are happening again and again for us. I think most of us, when we think about stress, it's like, it's a given, right? Oh yeah, we're all stressed out, stress, stress, stress. And if you ask people, well, is stress connected to how you feel and disease and your body? People go, oh yeah, yeah, it's connected. What we don't recognize is A, how deeply the stress is affecting every part of our lives. And B, we don't recognize how stressed we actually are. How many of you came here this weekend and as soon as you got here, it was like, oh, like I'm home, you know? Yoga, mountains, green, right? It's when we notice that that's how stressed we were before and we let go of that, we see there's a real change here. What the tapping does is that we can focus on specific issues that we're dealing with. Do the tapping process and retrain the brain, retrain the body. So when we look at that to-do list, we can tap right there on that, whatever's coming up, and retrain the brain and the body to respond. When we get three chapters deep in the book and all the fear comes up about, what if I actually get published? What if you know, I stand out? What if I have to speak up on stage like this? Anybody scared of public speaking? Anybody, any fears? Patty, you are? Oh. <laughs> Patty, my editor at Hay House. You know? <laughs> scared of public speaking, we'll have to work on that. Um, these are all conditioned responses. If you're scared of public speaking, it's likely because you've had an instance, an example, sometime in your life, whether you were five years old or 10 years old or it happened when you were 20, that you did something in front of other people and you didn't like the response. You were in fourth grade and you were reading a paper in front and the kid in the back laughed at you. And what happened? Boom, you closed down. A lot of the work that we do with the tapping, you know, we can tap on the surface stuff, we can tap on the procrastination, we can tap on the to-do list and the patterns of self-sabotage. The deepest work often comes when we look further back, when we say, well, what happened in fifth grade? And you know, it's these little experiences that fifth grade, you're in front of the class, someone laughs at you, you close down your energy just a little bit. Right? And then seventh grade, a similar experience, now you get up in front of the class, now you're expecting a negative experience. So now you're you're actually doing a worse job than you did in fifth grade. Fifth grade, you were pretty good. Now you're up there and you're like, oh my god. So now the kids laugh at you even more because now you're shaking when you're up there, right? <laughs> so we compound these experiences and that's with public speaking. Anything else you're faced with in your life is going to root back through all of these different experiences. So I want to have, like I said, I want this to be very experiential so you feel it in your body. So let's start, uh, I've talked about sabotage and limiting beliefs, but let's start by having a physical experience. One of the really great things about tapping is that you can use it to relax your body in such a big way. Um, last year I did a, uh, an Omega workshop with Elena Brower, who's a yoga teacher who's here, and Chris Carr. Elena's fantastic. And um, it was really neat because we were each sort of taking turns, and I did tapping before her yoga class, focused on letting go of the beliefs about your body and the tension and the anxiety, and then she taught an amazing yoga class and it was just, it all came together because everyone was like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm ready to let go and be open. So let's have um, a physical body experience so you can see that in your body. Does anyone have like real physical pain right now in their body that they, pretty chronic? Yeah? Anybody, like if we go from zero to 10, anyone five or higher right now? Yeah? Anyone want to volunteer? Okay, do you want to come up? Let's have three people up and we'll do some tapping on pain. Go ahead and great. So what we're going to do is um, 
I'm going to work with these lovely ladies up here. What's your name? Tiffany. Tiffany, nice to meet you. Hi, what's your name? Amanda, nice to meet you. Do we have mics for them? No. Any chance? No? Okay. So I will repeat what you say or just speak up. Hi, what's your name? Jenny. Jenny, okay. Um, so I'm going to tap focus on them, but you're also going to tap along, and I'll, and I'll take you through that process. So share with me the pain that you're experiencing right now. Left neck pain? Okay. So on a zero to ten scale, how strong is it? Uh, I'd say it's about five. About a five right now. Okay. And is this a recurring thing? Is this yeah? How when did it start? Um, I had a fall back in two thousand and one. Two thousand and one. Okay. Fall back in two thousand and one. Fibromyalgia kind of pain. Okay. So there's other pain in your body? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I just to give you we're gonna do some work right now, but just to give you even more hope about fibromyalgia. I filmed a documentary about five years ago called The Tapping Solution, which a few of you have seen. And it basically arose out of my passion for this technique, and I wanted to document what was happening. Because I could see it again and again with friends and families and clients, and I wanted to actually put it on film. And we had a lady with fibromyalgia who came to us, basically 10 people from around the country. We went to their house before. We brought them for a four-day event where we tapped together, and then we followed up with them afterwards. And the lady with fibromyalgia, who had had it diagnosed for about 15 years, so a long-time sufferer, uh, cortisone shots every three months to ease the pain. She couldn't go up and down the stairs. She woke up the second morning pain-free, 100% pain-free, and has remained so five years later. So there's, there is, and that's on film. It's like, it's documented to see. So there's hope for that. So, and tell me about your, the pain you're feeling. Um, my pelvis is, tends to get uneven and twisted. Okay. I see a okay, so uneven and twisted pelvis, and how painful is that, zero to 10? Okay. Um, I like a seven. A seven. Okay. When I wake up in the morning, it can be higher. Okay. Higher in the morning. Any? Whole left shoulder. Okay. Zero to ten? Seven. Seven. Okay. And when did that start? It's been going on for years. I get, <clears throat> I always have arm pain all over me all the time. Okay. And what's yours? It's two, three. Six. Okay. And how long have you, have you had your pain? Since, um, a couple months. A couple months. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start by doing just tapping on the pain itself. The reason I like starting with something as concrete as pain is because you, they can have a real experience and you will have an experience in your body of the shift. And it also shows very clearly what happens with the process. Because what we're doing is, yeah, we're tapping on the surface pain first, but you can see I've already asked a few questions about when did it start and what was going on then. And that's where we're gonna look deeper because oftentimes there's a lot more to the story than the pain. In the case of an accident, something like that, there's the accident and there's the pain from the accident. Now, some people have an accident and heal completely, right? Other people have very similar accident and don't heal at all. So the question is, what's the difference? And oftentimes, it can be trauma around the accident, emotions around the accident, the body just not fully processing what was going on at the time. And when we go back to that traumatic event, that accident, everything else clears from that, okay? So I want you to tune into to your body, everyone out there, and. Um, I want you to locate, if you have physical pain, then you know you have the pain. And I want you to give it a number in a zero to 10 scale. If you don't have any pain, feel for some tension, maybe in your neck. You know, you can kind of roll around your neck and get an idea of how loose am I. You can take a deep breath, and if you feel your breathing is very constricted, you want to tune into that. We want to tune into something specific in the body. A level of constriction, a level of pain, okay? And you want to give it a number on a zero to 10 scale, okay? And let's go through the tabbing process together. So I'm going to say some statements. You're going to follow me and, um, and just repeat after me just like a cult. So we will sound like a cult <laughs> very shortly. Okay? And as soon as you say the first statement, you're in. So just warning you. Okay? So tapping on the side of the hand. It's the karate chop point. We call it one hand, the other hand. It doesn't matter which side you do. So tapping the side of the hand. And just repeat. And even though I have this pain, even though I, have this pain I deeply and completely accept myself. Congratulations, you're now in. Okay. <laughs> Even, though Even though I have this pain, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have this pain, I deeply and completely accept myself. So that's a setup statement. Now we're going to go through the points. The first point is the eyebrow point. Inside of the eyebrow, you can do one side, you can do the other side, or you can do both sides right where the hair ends and meets the nose. Just tap gently five to seven times, two fingers. Don't worry about getting it right. I know there's some people out there going one, two, three, four, five. Just, just tap away. And now just repeat this pain. This pain. 
and now to the side of the eye. It's not at the temple, but on the eyeball, right on the side of the eye. You can do one side, you can do both sides. This pain. This pain. Under the eye, this pain in my body. Under the nose, this pain and stress in my body. Under the mouth, it's not on the chin, it's right that little crease in there under the lip. There's pain and stress in my body. We have three points left. The collarbone point, if you feel for the two little bones of the collarbone, and you go down just an inch and out to each side about an inch. You can tap with the whole hand to make sure you get it. There's pain and stress in my body. Now under the arm, right underneath the armpit, either side of the body, about three inches underneath, it'll be right on the bra line. For women and men, you know where it is. This pain in my body. And the last point right at the top of the head, this pain in my body. So that's what's called one round. Let's do one more now that you know the points. So we go right back to the eyebrow point, releasing this pain in my body. Side of the eye, this pain and tension. Under the eye, this stored pain and tension. Under the nose, all this pain and tension. Under the mouth, all this pain and tension in my body. Collarbone, releasing it now. Under the arm, letting it go. Top of the head, letting it go. So take a deep breath. And let it go. So we always do two things after every round. We check in on that number, that 0 to 10 scale, to see what happened with the pain, with, with whatever we're focusing on. And then we also pay attention to what else came up. You know, this time we were really focusing on the tapping process, but oftentimes when you get more used to the process, you'll find, you know, I was tapping on the pain and I kept thinking about the accident or something else that happened along the way. So that's a clue that that pain, that whatever issue you're working on might be connected. So did you feel any shift for you and did anything come up? Um, nothing came up. I just was thinking about the pain. And okay. I was thinking about the affirmation. Um, so zero to ten scale, what is it at now? Dropped down at least once. Okay, so you feel a shift. Okay, five to a four. Okay, great. How about you? I felt silly. You felt silly? <laughs> good, good. That's step one. You've achieved that, you know. If you don't feel silly, you're not doing it right, just so you know. And then I was laughing at myself because when I hit here, I was like, ow, that hurts. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, then that's, that's a good limp point to just massage and move that around. Any shift in the pain? Okay, and how about you? Um, when you mentioned the accident, the car, I started thinking about my dad, and I was like, I thought about my dad the whole time. Okay. And, and yeah. when did he pass? Um, a year and a half ago. Okay. And how's the pain? It's less. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's less, I don't know why. You know? Yeah. I, don't, I don't either. So, you know, do we need to know why? You know? Uh, how much less? Zero to ten scale. I would say like, it was like a good seven. It's nice. I'm always doing this. Yeah. Okay, seven to a five. Okay, all right, so let's keep going. Now we're gonna, so that was the first round and we saw no shift and then some shift. Now, I'm happy with anything. There's no such thing as a failure of, of something going through. If you don't shift, you just go deeper. If you shift at all, sometimes it gets worse for people as they focus in on an issue and they go, now I'm really feeling it. So we're just gonna keep going through it. And we're gonna focus on one person and we're all gonna tap together and you guys can forget your issues and you'll see kind of some of the magic that happens. So tell me about the accident that and as loud as possible, I know it's hard. I so. was on a hammock. Okay. And I have two children, my six year old and one year old. Okay. And my ex husband was pushing us, and it went up like that, like he was almost falling out of it, and the eye bolt gave out of the tree. Okay. And so the wood bar hit me in the occipital area, and, you know, my first you know, instinct sure. was to grab my children, so they were on top of me when I landed. Okay. So, I so how do you feel just talking about the accident now? Um, well, you can hear a little wave. Yeah. From my So, did everyone get most of that? Yes, okay. So can we see how physical pain goes back to all of these things, right? And how much harder it is gonna be for her body to heal if, there's two ways to talk about an accident, right, like that. There's, yes, it happened, this is a reality, here's what I'm sharing my story, and then there's wavering in the voice, there's stress, right? So what I'm postulating back to that fight or flight response is that even when you're not thinking about it, which you are often because it's affecting your life, 
there is that stress response. There's that constriction of energy around that event. Right? So, so let's do this. Um, what's the primary emotion that you feel when you think about the accident? Sadness. Sadness? OK. And how strong is that in a 0 to 10 scale? Four or five, OK. And where do you feel it in your body? My chest. My OK, OK. What's the part of you that is so close to breaking on this, just talking about this accident? Where's the real hurt? You mean emotionally? Mm -hmm. There's nobody here, so ignore them, you know. Is it about everything that's happened since, how it's affected your life now? Is it the fear of what, when that actually happened, the accident? What's, what keeps running for you around this accident? I think the way it's affected my life. OK. And how's it affected your life most? I was extremely athletic and uh, loved the outdoors. And pretty much anything active, I would do it. And so. For me, I have to really pay attention to what I do and can't do everything that I would like to. My fiance is extremely you know, athletic and outdoorsy, does triathlons and things like that. So it affects our relationship because he wants to always be out doing things and I, I can't always do that. So um, it affects more than just my physical. It's yeah. affecting the relationship and not, I mean, he's very supportive. It's not so much that. It's just I long for more. OK. OK. So let's do some tapping. So tapping the side of the hand. And everybody, just repeat after me, OK? Even though I had this accident, and I have the trauma in my body, and it's affected my life completely, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm still carrying the trauma of this accident in every cell of my body, I choose to release it now. Even though I have all the sadness in my body, I wish this hadn't happened. Why did it have to happen? I choose to release all of this now. So eyebrow, this trauma in my body, out of the eye, this accident. this accident. Under the eye, this terrible accident. This terrible accident. Under the nose, why did, this why did this happen? Under the mouth, I'm carrying all the sadness. sadness. Collarbone, all the sadness in my body. Under the arm, all the sadness in my body. Top of the head, head about this terrible accident. Eyebrow, releasing this accident now. Out of the eye, releasing the sadness now. Under the eye, letting it go. Under the nose, releasing this pain. Under the mouth, releasing this pain and sadness. Collarbone, my body is safe. Under the arm, my body is safe now. Top of the head, my body is safe now. Deep breath. How did that feel? Great. Okay, so let's tune into the physical pain first. Any shift there? Yeah, it's like almost gone. Almost gone, yeah. okay. Maybe a one. Maybe a one from a five, okay. Yeah. Okay, and tune into the sadness. That's decreased too. Okay. Maybe a two. Okay, tell me, so here's what I'd like you to do. Um, we're just gonna start tapping. So. The, the standard way of tapping is to pick the issue, right? So we want to focus on the pain, the sadness, give it a number and be as specific as possible, and then do the tapping process focused on that issue. Another way to do the tapping is to talk and tap. And just whatever's going on, you know, if you're calling a girlfriend and you're just venting about that day, right? Tap right then and there. Because what's that doing? There's nothing wrong with venting, right? It serves a purpose. The problem is when we vent 84 times in a row about the same issue, right? And that's what talk therapy, traditional talk therapy, tends to be. Let's talk again about mom, you know? <laughs> right? 
Now, I, what I am saying is let's talk about mom, because we have to talk about mom, but let's do it once, or let's do it twice, all right? Let's do it and actually do the tapping to process the emotions through the body so we don't have to run them again and again, okay? So I, what I want you to do is um, just start tapping on the eyebrow point and describe to me, I want you to see the accident in as much detail as possible. C can you go back there now? Okay. And just move through the points, so tap on the side of the eye. And tell me what happened again. Yeah. Um, again, swinging on a hammock. It was a nice day. We were relaxing and having fun. And all of a sudden, the eye bolt gave way. Okay. And do you remember that moment when it gave away? Yeah. Okay. So try to tune into that moment when it gave away. What, what did you feel instantly? You, you, you said you clutched for your children? So tune into that moment, and can you feel that somewhere in your body? Where is it? In the chest. In the chest? Okay. And what's, how strong is it, 0 to 10 right now? Maybe a 3. A 3, okay. So just tune back into it. Okay. Just stay with it. Stay with that moment. And just keep tapping. And just keep tapping until that moment releases. Did you feel a shift? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are we looking for there? We're looking for that one second where most of the trauma happened. In the film The Tapping Solution, a great practitioner by the name of Rick Wilkes says, if we can be traumatized in a second, right, because that's what it takes for that to be happen, why does it take years to heal? Why can't we be healed in a second, a minute, an hour? And really, that's what's happening here. We, if it can happen that quickly, why can't it unhappen that quickly? That's where we're going just for that moment. So tune back into that pain. Is that still at a one? OK. So also with pain, tends to sit at a one for 20 minutes to half an hour, maybe longer. My feeling about it is that it's just kind of two things. One, residual muscle tension that's just releasing. And two, you just have used to having it for so long that it doesn't, you don't know what a zero would feel like, you know? It's like, oh, okay, there's still something there, so, okay. How are you doing? Good. Any shift in your pain? Um, a little bit. Okay. What has anything come up for you as we've been doing the tapping? Um, I'm a single mom, also, okay. with two young kids, and um, her story brought up a, a moment that was upsetting for me. Okay. Yeah. And, um, I can how scary that mm. was. When did your pain start again? Um, well, it's been off and on. Um, I think uh, I, I don't really enjoy sitting still. Okay. Actually, go through Lady Yoga. Okay. And my time to so, um, And I have a history with this knee in particular because um, I was a runner. But instead of sitting still when I was uncomfortable, I would go run. Okay. Um, and then the on my body over time, I couldn't run like that anymore. And now it's affecting my yoga practice. Okay. So I push myself too far. Okay. So you say on and off. When is it on? Um, when I feel vulnerable. Okay. And when does that happen? Um, like if, if I'm in a new relationship. Okay. So uh, how much does it hurt right now, 0 to 10? Five or six. And tell me about that pain and feeling vulnerable. Does that connect for you? Like you can feel that vulnerability in the pain? Yeah, it makes me feel, the pain makes me feel vulnerable because when you were starting the, the class by talking about how you people start things and don't finish them, I get very frustrated when I can't, um, sort of like you feel frustrated when she can't do certain things with her fiance because yeah. of an injury. I feel the same frustration because of this. Okay. How, did, how does the injury serve you? An excuse, I guess. <laughs> okay. I mean, most of the things that we do in our lives actually are serving us in a huge way. Procrastination serves us in a huge way. Self-sabotage serves us in a huge way. A lot of it has to do at the most core level with feeling safe, right? So 
If there's something that feels unsafe about speaking in public, about writing a book, about whatever, following your passion, if part of you feels unsafe, well, you're not going to do that. You know, the body is designed to ke like, keep you safe. Right? So we will often come up with other things to help us do that, whether they are procrastination, whether it's physical pain, whether it's other patterns that we're running in our lives. You know? And when we see a recurring pattern, when you know, well, I procrastinate or I sabotage this or that and the other, that's just a clue that if the pattern's running again and again, there's something going on underneath it. Okay? So let's do a little tapping. So, even though part of me feels vulnerable, and I don't like it, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm afraid to feel vulnerable, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm afraid to feel vulnerable, it's not safe. It's not safe. I, choose I choose to relax now. Eyebrow. I'm afraid to feel vulnerable. Side of the eye. It's not safe. It's not safe. Under the eye. It's not safe. It's not safe to feel vulnerable. Under the mouth. It's not safe. Collarbone. This pain in my body. Under the arm. is keeping me safe. Top of the head. These patterns are keeping me safe. I rub, but I choose to release them now. Side of the eye, it's safe to feel vulnerable. Under the eye, it's safe to feel vulnerable. Under the nose, letting this pain go. Under the mouth, letting these patterns go. Collarbone, letting them all go. Take a deep breath. How did you feel as we talked about that, feeling vulnerable? Yeah. What's that, vulnerable? <laughs> well, good. I mean, you know, wh what we're doing with this is we, are, we want to feel the emotion. And oftentimes when I talk, I get pushed back from a certain belief system about the secret and the law of attraction and positive thinking, which I absolutely believe in 100%. And they say, well, what are we doing talking about all this negative stuff? You know, I mean, there's people who are like, will not utter a negative statement because they're going to attract it in their lives. Now, those people, the ones who go if, that far, right, the 100% never utter a negative statement in your life, you meet them and you know that underneath they're just bubbling and simmering and it's just like, <laughs> I, usually, I usually talk to them and I take a step back, you know, because I'm like, this is going to get ugly pretty soon, you know. So what are we doing? Well, we're addressing the negative for a period of time. We're acknowledging this is how we feel. Not to stay stuck there, but to move through there. So it's great to feel vulnerable. It's like you are acknowledging this. Is, and how good does it feel when you actually get to the root of that acknowledgement? The tapping process is a huge part of it. I mean, that's, to me, the, the difference between this and talk therapy and any other stuff that you might be doing. But it's also just as important to actually get to the core of the issue, to finally acknowledge to yourself, even though I feel vulnerable, I deeply and completely accept myself. So when, do, when we do that with the tapping, that's when we can have big breakthroughs. Any shift in the pain? Okay. How much better is the hip? Zero to ten. Like a four. So the other thing with physical pain and with disease and with these things that we believe, like you told me first that your hips were off, right? I would actually do some tapping later if I were you on, even though I believe that my hips are off, right? Even though the doctors told me that, you know, they've done x-rays of people with back pain and they've done like a thousand x-rays and had doctors pick the ones that have sciatica pain or have a slip disc, you know, oh yeah, there's a slip disc, they have pain. And when they match it up later to the people who actually reported they had pain, no match. You have people with slip discs left and right who are pain free, okay? And you have people with nothing and they have pain. So when we have these diagnoses, I mean, we all know the power of a doctor and not that they don't do amazing work in a lot of respects, but when they tell you the truth, about what you have or who you are, and you take that in in such a deep way, that can be exactly what's stopping you from healing. Um, in the Tapping Solution film, we have Patricia who fractured her L1 okay, in a boating accident. So crushed, she had rods, she had all this stuff. Doctors told her she would never be able to do yoga again, and she would have pain for the rest of her life. Right? That's great to hear. You, know, like, <laughs> you will have pain for the rest of your life. The body goes, okay, I'm going to have pain for the rest of my life. 
So she was on all sorts of pain medications, as you can imagine. We did the tapping with her. She was pain-free by the end of the event, doing yoga again, off all meds. I mean, just the opposite of the reality. And a big part of it for her was to deconstruct those beliefs, what her doctors told her. There's a lot of authority that comes in. It's like, it's our parents growing up, and then it's doctors and other authority figures later, right? When they tell us something, it's downloaded straight into our system. So we can do the tapping on that specifically. Okay, and how about you? Pain, any shift in the pain? Um, it just it feels better. It feels better? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, I think that's good for now. Thank you so much. Give me a hand. What time is it? Okay, very nice. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so, we have 20 minutes, I, we can do some more tapping, and we focus on physical pain, we can talk about um, self-sabotage, those patterns, those things that you want to break through, or I can take questions, I really want to serve you here, so let's do this, let's do a couple of questions so I can see where you are with it, and then we'll do a little tapping to wrap it up at the end. Yeah, go ahead. I noticed that sometimes you sometimes you Sure. I noticed yeah. that each time wasn't a complete round, so I'm yeah, wondering there, there's if not there's a reason a, for so it. So the, the, the cut and dried process is to always start on the hand to bring the issue up and then to tap through. Um, you can take your intuition and let it run. You know, The reality is that if you stop here and you don't do the last two points, it doesn't like, oh, my body's broken now. You know, like Body's very generous, so do it freely. The other thing you can do too is you can just tap. You know. Um, especially for public situations, if you feel some anxiety then, it's tough to do this in public, you know. Though I am catching people on a plane doing it, so <laughs> now I know it's spreading, because the plane is the place to tap, you know. Um, so you can just tap on, like, collarbone tapping, nobody sees. I mean, I've done it. People just don't notice. And you'd be surprised how much you can do, like, people are very much in their own world. So if you're in a situation where you feel anxiety come up, you can do the tapping. There's this great story. We've, um, we've donated a lot of copies of the tapping solution to veterans hospitals and hospitals and uh, prisons and other places like that. And there's been some great work done, not by me, with veterans, uh, doing research with veterans, working with them on PTSD. You know, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, which is what a lot of these men and women are coming back with, at the end of the day, it's that swing experience, that accident, times a thousand. Right? It's that again and again with a lot more consequences. So you can imagine that swing experience, you have that happen a thousand times with people dying, with more consequences, and now the body's just locked up. You know, there's just, there's no way to operate. So when we do the tapping with these veterans with PTSD, it helps to unlock those memories and really get them their life back. And uh, so we donated some movies to uh, Fort Hood, and one of the guys working there told me a story that he was, he had learned the, uh, the tapping and he walked into a Walmart and he was totally overwhelmed. Like that's one of the things with PTSD, it's like too many sounds, sights, smells. So he was freaking out, so he started tapping, you know, right when he was there. And two other Marines walked by and said, keep tapping, it works. You know, so I was like, ah, oh. so if these Marines are doing it, you know, then we know it's special. So, any other questions? Yeah, back there. So my question is, what do you do? I, I hear that tapping is a good solution for lots of different kinds of anxiety and things like that. Except, what if the tapping itself brings up a ton of anxiety? Yeah. And so then they're like doing this. Sure, absolutely. Well, so there's two things. Um, you can do a lot of the tapping yourself, right? When you think about something and you're just scared to go there, then work with a practitioner. Or if you find that you're hitting a wall, it's like, you're tapping, all this anxiety wells up, and you're just shutting down again. There's so many people that do this out there, find a practitioner to work with that can expertly guide you through the process, that can see, hey, here's where it's going. The other thing, if you're doing it on your own and it comes up, just power through it. You know? I mean, that's the best you can do if you're doing it on your own. But if it doesn't feel safe, work with a practitioner for it. Hi there. Um, what do you do if you have an infant or a young child that doesn't follow directions? Now you want to tap because they don't follow directions or you want to tap on them? <laughs> Even though they don't follow my directions, uh, I know what you're saying. 
Yes, so, and so are you asking how to tap with an infant? OK, so there's two things. My, yes. um, you can tap on them directly, and they completely respond to that. I have two little nephews. One of them, Lucas, we've done so much tapping on him. He, had some, he was sick this past winter, and I, I tapped on him a lot. And I'll say to him, tap, tap, and he'll go, you know, like, I mean, he's like a year old. It's just too cute. So you can teach, you can just tap on them, right? And the reality is, obviously, the vocalizing, the verbal side, helps us to connect to the issue. But if you have a crying baby, they're connected to their issue, right? They know, they know what's going on. So you can tap on them. And you can also tap surrogately, which means you do the tapping for them. Now, that's when we get woo out there, like, OK, your energy field's affecting their energy field. I believe in it. I've seen it happen again and again. I don't have the scientific validation for it, so I usually don't talk about that side of things in front of different audiences. You know, I won't talk to a business about, like, oh, you can tap for your boss, and you, know, like, <laughs> you, you can help resolve his problems by, you know. So, so you can tap surrogately for them. And then also, even before the surrogate tapping, I think it's important to tap on whatever issue they're dealing with, your feelings about it, your reaction. Because a lot of times, we tend to project onto others stress, anxiety, worry, whatever it is. So if there's a pattern going on that's really difficult, you know, if a mother comes to me and says, my kid has ADD and he's a mess, you know, like I just can't deal with him, I can't handle it, I, we need to tap on him. You know? Let's start by tapping on you first. You know? <laughs> let's bring down your ADD. You know? <laughs> like, let's calm that down and then see how he reacts. Yeah, go ahead. Could you speak a little more about, um, I guess, the physiological connection between the tapping points and how that um, sure. connects with parts of your body? You know, there's maybe your yeah. Yeah. nervous system or yeah, whatever so it might be. We're, we're uh, tapping at endpoints of meridians. Right? Uh, for a long time, the discussion was primarily about the meridian system, and these are all like this is the stomach meridian. Okay, the the way this is origi originated almost 30 years ago, there was a gentleman by the name of Dr. Roger Callahan, and he was a traditional psychotherapist working with clients, just talk therapy. They'd come in, they would talk about their issues, and he had a client by the name of Mary who he had worked with for two to three years on a severe water phobia. I mean, scared of w water in all forms, showers, drinking water not just oceans, like everything. So it was a real out-and-out -out phobia. They've been working together, exposure therapy, sitting by his pool, looking at it, talking about it. And she felt a little better, but it was so stressful that the headaches that she walked away with from doing that was even worse than dealing with it. So they were looking at his pool, and uh, she said, you know, when I look at that, I just feel queasy in my stomach. And the night before, he was reading about the stomach meridians, well, all the meridians, that the stomach meridian ends underneath the eye. So just on a whim, he said, why don't you try tapping underneath the eye? So she's looking at the water, taps underneath the eye, phobia's gone, right? Completely cleared like that. So he went on to develop and look at these endpoints of meridians and develop these algorithms. And when he did it, it was a different algorithm for different issues. So if you had anger, you would do a certain sequence. If you had something else, another sequence. Uh, Gary Craig, who's the founder of EFT, which is what we're focused on today, he basically said, it doesn't matter if we do it in different sequences. Let's hit all the main points at once so we can remember it, so we can do it all the time. It really made it more user friendly and added a lot more refinements to the process. You know? So I've spent most of my time recently talking about the effect that it has on the amygdala and that fight or flight response center for two reasons. One, we're able to measure that, and we're able to measure the cortisol levels dropping in the body. They did a study where cortisol dropped 24% in one hour of tapping. Okay? It was such a dramatic result that the lab took a month and a half to give back the results because they did not believe it. They said, there's something wrong with our equipment or because they did blood samples before, they did the tapping, blood samples afterwards, and it was average 24%. Some people had 50% drops in cortisol. You know? um, so I'm focusing on that when I share it with people because, like it or not, that very concrete Western scientific, what is it doing, is what people understand. The reality is there's a lot more to it. There's the meridian systems. I don't believe that it's only addressing the amygdala. I believe it's addressing the flight, fight or flight response center in every cell of our body. I believe that every cell has a fight or flight response center. So that's why something can be stuck in your stomach. You know, We can tap on something. You can feel it in your stomach. It's not all just the head. So, and there's also energy fields beyond that that I think it's addressing.
You're welcome. Any other questions? No? Okay. Oh, one back there. Go ahead. Hi, everybody. I'm one of the fortunate ones that actually lives here at Stratton. And I've been a serious student of personal development for about 20 years. And I have been putting a lot of intention about studying the law of attraction in the past six months, which I've always kind of been in tune to. I think you all know it's the same thing. Really, karma is the same thing. But really, kind of putting a lot of serious intention on learning more about um, the scientific things about the law of attraction. And I discovered tapping about three months ago, just on YouTube. I love YouTube. It's so great. You can learn anything on YouTube. And I got introduced to Nick. And I just put it out there. You know, I wanted to learn more about tapping. And I really think how cool it is how you showed up in my backyard for me. Thank you. <laughs> and the law of attraction, in, this is living proof for me. You know, yeah, well, there's no works. accident it that works. you just you know, came. You know, as you as much as I said yeah, before, thank well, you. we're focusing on the negative. EFT works extremely well on the positive, on law of attraction. You know, for just a quick example, when most of us set goals or something we want to attract in our life, we do a vision board. We look at the vision board and it's like, okay, that's great, it's fantastic. What I suggest is to look at that vision board, really feel all of this coming true, and then tune into how you feel. Because right? most of us just put it out there as opposed to go, okay, so uh, let's say I have this car that I put on my vision board. How do I feel about this? Well, I put a Mercedes up there. Okay, if I get a Mercedes, my friends are going to hate me. <laughs> Wait, where did that come from? Right? So now you have two choices. You can either take the Mercedes off because it's not a fit, you know, or you can say, even though I'm worried about what my friends are going to think about me. You know, we have a tendency to put all these amazing, fantastic goals out there without actually looking at the reality of, what is, what's my life going to look like if all of this happens? And I think looking a little deeper into that process, then you can tap and then you can gain clarity. So not only can you feel good about the Mercedes if that's what you want, but you can also refine and go, actually, I just put that up there because my friends have a Mercedes and I'm just trying to chase after them, but that's not what I want. You know? So the process helps us to gain clarity. When we're not stressed, when we're at that place of peace, looking at that vision board or our goals or whatever it is, that's when we can really move towards them in a much faster way. So. Are you suggesting to tap when you're creating the vision? Yeah, you can tap when you're creating the vision board. Yeah, it's very important to be as specific as possible. I think part of the challenge with the vision board, I mean, I have one, is that it's just kind of like, cut, play, cut, put it all up there, boom, how beautiful, you know? But if you really want to make that real, you've got to feel that in your body. You know, if you want to, if you put a picture of Oprah up on there because you want to be on her show or her network, you got to feel in your body what it's going to be like when you're standing in front of her. Because if you, if you think about that and you think, okay, Oprah's right there and your body just panics, you know, or you go, I'm not ready or whatever the thoughts are, then you're going to do things consciously, but mostly unconsciously. You won't even know you're doing them. You know, you just, you won't be moving towards that goal. You won't return that phone call. You'll procrastinate. You'll sabotage. You go, yeah, I'm just... I'm not getting there. I had all these things that I wanted to happen, but I didn't get there. And it's because you weren't truly aligned with it. Now, the law of attraction talks about alignment, right? Being in aligned with the energy of whatever it is that you're feeling. So the more you get clear on how do I really feel about this thing that I want, and then clear away all these issues, the more likely you are to have it. Yeah, go ahead. So when you're going to use tapping to clear self-sabotage or in that way, the, um, the, the, the way you used wording, language, when you were tapping, are there specifics that you, you, know, you can sort of run through for us now, how, what, how that might sure. be different than Yeah, so, so let's imagine similar. the most important thing, people get really hung up on language, and I understand why, because it's how we're trying to make sense of this process. The most important thing is to connect to the feeling or whatever it is that you envision, and then do the tapping, not worry about the language. But I understand the language being difficult. So, well, let's, let's play it out specifically. Tell me something that, a pattern. Tell me something you want. Tell me something that's in your way. Like, when you're thinking about doing this, what is it about? Well, there's a couple of areas in my life. There's well, there's a couple of areas in my life. There's the area okay. of creating more income So when you think about creating right more now, income, that how do you feel in your body, just tuning into that? Okay. 
I don't know why, but I feel a little scared. Like it's like, like okay. I, I I know it's possible, so but just to back it up, I'm gonna withdraw. just keep hitting you and hitting you with this, right? So what's happening? She's thinking about creating more income. There's a small or large fight or flight response center where you go, oh, this is scary. So right. are you gonna go out and create more income then? No. You're gonna go put on the TV, you're gonna do clean the house, like those are the safe things, you know. So what scares you most about creating more income? What just came up when you said that is managing it, so sort of consistency okay. and managing so it there's, as it Now, this grows. is a belief that we're tapping on, right? So there's a belief in there. I mean, I had it for a long time. I was said to myself, if things keep growing, my life is going to get more difficult and more complicated, right? How many of you feel that? Like, if everything, you know, that I want to have happen happens, my life's going to suck, <laughs> right? It's just going to be the worst. I, these are all my dreams. Please don't let them happen. Okay, so, there's, so what do we do? We don't make them happen. It's, right? I haven't had that. So but, what we can yeah. tap on there is the belief. Even though I believe that, let's do some tapping right now. So tune, so yeah, like please, please. So, so we're gonna tap on the belief that life will get more complicated or difficult, right? Managing it. So tune in and again, with that zero to 10 scale, we're doing it so we have a reference point. With a belief it's a little harder, it's a, different than physical pain, but just tune in and see what happens. So zero to 10, if you think, okay, how true is this belief? My life is gonna be more difficult if I create more income or whatever your issue is. If your book gets published, my life is gonna be more difficult, harder to manage. 10 being, yeah, this is true. This is the reality. Zero being, it's not true at all. There's some people listening who are like, no, I, I can handle this. And those are the people that are actually doing it, the ones that can handle it. So, so let's tap, side of the hand. Even though I have this belief, that creating more income, income is going to be difficult. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm worried about managing everything, it's going to be too much to do. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm really worried about having to manage everything, I choose to relax now. Hi, bro. I don't want to manage all this. <laughs> Side of the eye, it's too difficult. It's too difficult. Under the eye, there's too much to do. Much to do. Under the nose, I can't, do it. I can't do it. Under the mouth, I just can't do it. it. Collarbone, there's too much to do. Much to do. Under the arm, there's too, much to do. there's too much to do. Top of the head, I can't manage it all. Hi, bro. It's too stressful. too stressful. Side of the eye, way too stressful. Under the eye, I'd rather not happen. Under the nose, all the stress. Under the mouth, releasing all the stress in my body. Collarbone, letting it go. Go ahead and take a deep breath. So now we tune in, and you ask yourself that same statement. Will things be, you know, this, whatever that statement was, things will be very difficult to manage. So did anything shift for you then as you think about that same issue? I think that uh, I, what was what as I was thinking about it, it occurred that 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 not that this action is silly, but that my th getting all caught up in that was kind of in the way and being silly, and that all there is is to to okay. do what right. there is to so do. So it's that cognitive shift. One of the reasons why I harp so much on that zero to ten scale is that the shift can be so profound that if you don't give it a number before, you say you never had the issue. I, I see it all the time. You know, it's like I wasn't angry at my mom. Like no. <laughs> I love her. It's like, <laughs> let's rewind the videotape, you know, and show how you actually feel. So, so what happened in that situation? You focused on that belief that was holding you back. You relaxed your body. You sent that calming signal to the body. And now the brain starts looking at the reality. Yeah, I can do this, you know. Um, I'm starting a seven-week coaching program in about a month purely on tapping and finances. And the first week, what we're doing is tapping on all the triggers in our lives, right? So we're looking at the bills. Because what happens when you get a bill? If you're in debt at all, you get a bill, you freak out, and it's like, oh, this sucks, I hate it. But you're not empowered at all. You can't move through that. I was working with a client the other day who was completely overwhelmed by her bills, and we tapped looking at the bills and exploring what they meant and everything. And then she looked at it and goes, you know, this is actually very reasonable. Like, all I have to do is do X, X, and X. And, you know, why didn't I follow up on all those opportunities that I had here, here, and here 
where I can clearly make more income. You know, so we want to, the fight or flight response is actually fight, flight, or freeze. Right? And most of us are at the freeze response. We just, we're stuck exactly where we are. That's why 10 years go by and we go, okay, I still haven't done what I wanted to do. Like, you're stuck there, you're frozen. So, does that help? Yeah, the, um, the tappingsolution.com is the, um, the website, and there's a f an email newsletter there, and we'll be talking about the seven-week coaching program if you're interested in that. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Did you have one before, Kate, or is it gone? She covered it. Covered it? <laughs> we all have these same issues, you know. How much time do we have? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. In regards to the tapping on my shoulder, um, I do massage like once a week for the widespread pain. I'm feeling mm. almost like I do after a massage. I'm feeling a lot of heat, warmth. Yeah, I mean, that's um, just those muscles unlocking and the energy. And what's great about it is m massage is fantastic. I get them all the time. The issue is, it's like if I don't address that tension, it's just undo the tension, go back and do the tension. Undo the tension. I mean, it's nice, but. So that's what's been happening with the massage. We're looking to get deeper here so the tension doesn't come back. And the body is, a, the reason I start with pain is that the body is just an incredible messenger for anything we have going on. So whether we're looking at pain, clearly the body's telling us something. But also if we're looking at a limiting belief, if we're looking at, oh, I, I can't manage all this, tune into the body. Because we tend to get really heady and then we get lost and that even more frozen. We're trying to think, wait, blah. Tune into the body, ask yourself, where is this fear in my body? about managing things or anything else you have go on in your life. If you're looking at relationships and have trouble with relationships and you want to attract the love of your life or you're having a hard relationship, tune in, not to everything else that's going on, tune into how you feel. Like that's when you sort of sink into your body. And, and being present is an important part of this practice. And you can even tap on, even though I'm not present right now, right? And you can feel the difference from when you're like, ah, oh, flighty, fight, flight, freeze out here, and then here, and from this place is when you can actually address those deeper things and address the trauma that's stored there and move through it. Okay. Okay, last question. Go ahead. Uh, EFT is emotional freedom techniques. And, uh, and it's also just called tapping, generally. Tap. And one back there. Okay, have you tried this with alcohol or drugs? Yeah, so... Um, so with any sort of addiction, there's two components where it works really well. The, the first one is just the purely physical addiction. Right? One of the early screenings of the tapping solution, I had it in a little yoga studio, and we watched the movie, and then we were having this great discussion afterwards, and a guy raises his hand, and he's like, I'm sorry, but I just need a cigarette so badly. Like, I'm, I'm at a level 10, you know? And he's like, and this is really upsetting for me because I'm loving this discussion. Now I've got to take myself out of here. So I said, let's do some tapping. So, we tap right then on the craving itself, you know, even though I crave this, et cetera. And it went right down, he was like, he was shocked, and he's like, I'm fine. I mean, and that's not something you can just make up with. If you need a cigarette at a 10, there's no like, okay, I'm fine, you know? Like, you need it, so he cleared that craving. So you can do the surface stuff. The next level of it is everything that surrounds who you are now as an addict, right? So for smokers, I, I really find a lot of smokers do it because they like to get away. It's like, that's the new thing. Now, a lot of people are happy that you can't smoke anywhere, because it's like, I get to go sit by myself, leave, my family leaves me alone, and I'm there just relaxing, you know? Uh, for drinkers, same thing. Like, this is my time. This is my time away to enjoy life. The deepest level is the childhood stuff, you know? It's the traumas, it's the beliefs, it's when did you start drinking, what was going on then, um, that's a great place to start. Yeah, I started drinking when my mom died. I started drinking when this happened in my life. I started drinking when I started this job. You know, I started drug abuse in high school. Well, what was going on then? What was the stress in high school that was going on then that you know, made it go further? So there's the surface, and like anything else, you can go deeper. You know? Great? Okay. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure and honor to be with you today. Thank you.